Hello and uh, welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now today uh, what I'm going to do is we're just going to do a quick sort of quick review type comparison of the Riga LX R amplifier and the, and the Breo. Um, I'm trying to do a quick video, video because I've, I've done a few recently where it was like cracking on 45 minutes so I think that's, that's kind of pushing my luck a little bit so I'll try and do, do a quick and try not to waffle and try not to go off on a, a tangent then we'll hopefully be able to do it a bit, a bit more quickly. Um, yeah, basically the um, Brio was always their sort of budget ampl amplifier. I mean, going right back from I think, probably about 1984, I'm guessing. I'll probably put the right figure down the bottom here because it's just taken a while. I guess 84, 85. I think the first Brio came out, which was a big clamshell uh, one they used to do. Um, Still going. Most uh, there's, there's a lot of them still out there. Actually, uh, really good little amplifier. Bit of a bit of a giant killer. Um, and this is sort of the latest incarnation. There's probably about five versions of the Brio from from back then. Really, probably five or six certainly. Um, the past the last two have been half width. Um, and it's sort of advanced, it's got much more refined than it used to be, and it's got driving capabilities increased to the point of you might say, well, why would you want anything better than this, really? Because it, it does, it's got all the signs of a sort of higher end, higher end amplifier that it drives speakers at, at, at low volumes. It'll drive quite difficult speakers at low volumes, which is usually a sign of um, being properly designed in that, as the, with a speaker, the, the the impedance isn't static, it moves around and quite often in the, in the, at the base end of a speaker the impedance will fall and when they talk about a speaker being difficult to drive it's because there'll be big swings of impedance um, and if an amplifier is designed just to drive at 8 ohms and give a really spectacular wattage figure at that, at, at that point, so perhaps it's 8 ohms, 100 watts um, Quite often, if they're designed like that, you'll find that the the power actually drop off. If the impedance drops, the power drops off because they've, they've concentrated all their energy into making it 100 watts just to get that figure, 100 watts at eight ohms. And what an amplifier needs to do to drive speakers properly is actually to increase the wattage as the impedance drops. Um, I and mean, a perfect amplifier would be, say, if it's 100 watts at eight ohms, it would have to be um, 200 watts at four ohms, 400 watts at two ohms. 800 watts at one ohm, well, possibly 1600 watts at half an ohm. I mean, that has been done. I mean, Crow used to produce amplifiers that did that. I mean, the big American uh, brand, uh, but they would be sort of the size of this table with big carrying handles on, and run stinking hot. You know, you could actually heat heat your room with them. Um, and that was for a, to have a 100 watt amplifier. That was a perfect amplifier. Obviously, you can't do that because most people don't want an amplifier the size of a coffee table, um, the size of a coffee table. Um, you need to try and make it in a more usable sort of size. So things like the Brio, yeah, they do increase the what does increase as the impedance drops, but just not to that degree really. And it's not it's not practical in the in the real world to do that. Um, but what it means is that the speakers will sound more full and more controlled and better really if the if the amplifier is is like I say designed properly and the impedance increases as and the wattage increases as the impedance drops then you get this full and controlled sound. Um, what the Brio is good at doing, which also its competition don't do very well, is keeping a grip of speakers even at quite low volumes, um, which is a sign of a really good design, to be fair. Because yeah, most amplifiers have a bit of a sweet spot. You'll find that. If, if you listen to your amplifier, you'll find it sounds OK, OK, OK. Oh, no, it sounds brilliant. And quite often, with more mainstream brands, they just start to sound brilliant to the point where they're really a little bit too loud. Uh, whereas the Breo, lower to medium volumes, it still sounds full. It's still driving the speakers. And it's still sounding really sort of n enjoyable. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't sort of drop into a bland sort of a blandness. Um, so you might say, well, why do I need anything better than the Breo? Because you're know, talking about the Breo as it's the best thing ever made, and it is for its money. It's astonishing. Really, I don't know how they do it. The LXR. It's kind of a Brio, but on a big scale. It's it's it sounds like a big Brio. It's got a much bigger sound stage. Um, it, it goes deeper in the bass. It's got a more detail in the treble, but it's got that same character. It's got that same warm valve-like quality that Riga amps have always had. Um, 
I think um, I think the guys at the guys at Riga are quite into into valves actually. I'm surprised they haven't produced a valve. Um, they, they do sort of they almost try and ape that sort of feel of a that really causative sort of warm sort of cozy feeling that you get from valve amps. The Rigas have sort of got that feeling. Um, and the LXL, like I say, has got more of it. And you'll find with the LXL you can go even lower in the volume, barely, barely idling, and it still sounds full and, and engaging. Um, but everything on a bigger scale, and it'll drive even more difficult speakers. You can put this into you know, some crazy stuff, and it still still drives. Um, so it's yeah, it's, it's a really, in some ways, my favourite amp in the range. You know, as, as an all-rounder, is the LXR. Um, not funny enough, I. I the illicit, I feel, the illicit is a better amplifier. The next model up, the illicit is a better amplifier. But there's so much about this that I like. I, t I would tend to spec this over an illicit sometimes. I think it's just a little. It can be more engaging to listen to. It's not as refined as the illicit, and it doesn't drive as well as the illicit does because the illicit is even more crazy in its driving ability. Um, but there's something about the, the LX. It's just got that sort of magic balance that sounds so good. Really. Um, I mean, and figures wise, it's it's. I mean, I'll probably do a separate video on this because this really would go off on a tangent, but wattage, wattage doesn't really matter in the scheme of things. If you want to know, it's 50 watts on the Breo, uh, the LX is 75, I think something like that. Uh, in real terms, you wouldn't hear the difference between 50 watts and 70, 70 whatever watts because it's a low, I'm good, I'm good, obviously going off on a tangent, but I'll, I'll try and stop myself. Um, power is logarithmic sort of goes up in a logarith logarithmic way so that the graph as the volume increases the, the wattage barely comes up and all of a sudden it'll kick in um, and most people are quite you can go to quite loud levels and you're not using more than a watt but a little bit louder it might be five and a little bit louder again it might be 50 and a little bit louder it might be 120 so the diff when you get in when you get into double or triple triple figures the difference in actual volume is very, relatively quite small considering the, the journey you've done up the volume control where number one on the volume control might be a thousandth of a watt number two on the volume control might be a hundredth of a watt number three might be might be a watt uh, by the time we get to four and it's 20 after that you know the, most of the volume increase has come has come in that first sweep of the volume um, and the last little bit of it the numbers are starting to clock up really fast so I remember in the old days when it, it seemed in the 80s people were obsessed with wattage and they would trade and amplify from I've got the 100 watt techniques and I'm, I need to get the 120 watt techniques I want to get something better and you couldn't explain it was so instilled in people that you just couldn't explain it to them why you know that's not not relevant at all it's not relevant um, there's much more input there's much more going on in an amplifier than how many watts it is um, so yeah, I'll stop that tangent now before I've got to get carried away. But anyway, yeah, so features wise, um, obviously, volume control, volume control, uh, stamps, straightforward volume control. The illicit has a um, sort of more of a dig digital control, and I think that's part of the issue with it actually for me. Is that although so I'll do another video on that, but yeah, I think um, these are more con conventional volume controls. You've got the um, selector switch so as you press the selector it cycles through the little LEDs on here cycle through the inputs and again the, the Brio cycle through the inputs you've got um, a final stage and then four other line inputs for you know, your CD, radio, um, streamer if you must uh, on there and there's also a record out so you can connect up a headphone amplifier it's actually got a headphone socket on here but there's a, you, you could connect up a, a separate headphone amp on, uh, amplifier onto this the record out that used to be used for tape decks, but nowadays it's used for other other things really. Um, LXR, same again, phono stage. The phono stage in this is quite a lot better, it's the one that they use in the illicit. Um, and then we've got another four inputs again, so it's the same as the Brio. It's got the record out for your headphone amp, but it's also got a um, preamp, amp, preamp amp put on it as well, which is actually quite a useful thing to have. And I don't know why we haven't kind of cashed in on it a little more. Why? Because the preamp amp means you could drive a power amp. Now if there was an LXR power amp, that would mean that you could have, if you've got bio speakers, you could have the LXR driving the treble, or the bass, 
and a separate power amp driving the treble or the bass. Um, and that's really good. I mean, there's, there's other manufacturers that do do that, and it's a great upgrade. So, why, why they don't do that, I don't know. At the moment, you could actually run another manufacturer's power amp on this if you wanted to, but as Riga is so good at it, why would you? Um, so, if you're listening, Phil, at Riga, um, nice LXR power amp, they fantastic, they can do that. Um, so yeah, but so this is there, and you could also actually can, you could also drive an active sub if you wanted to as well. So you could actually uh, connect a sub in there. To be honest, don't unless you're going to spend a lot of money on a sub. Don't buy a sub for your system because it wrecks it. Um, but a really good one, yeah, you can on that adjust soon, right? But that's another tangent. I'm not going to go down. Um, right. So I'll um, try to think what else we need to do on that. I'll show you the back panel. I'll just move the camera. Okay, this is the Brio, so um, kind of already covered this, but just to show you where we, where we are. Record player input on there. Um, the There is an earth terminal, but it's actually underneath on the Brio for some reason. It's, uh, it's a bit of a fiddle to do, but once you, once it's connected, it's connected. Um, you have to do it with the amp on its side, really. Then you've got your four line inputs. So, again, like I say, CD player, tuner, whatever. Um, only like, they're, they're numbered 234 on the back there. They're not, number one is a phone now. They're not actually labelled as CD amp tuner, cassette deck or whatever. They're, um, cause nowadays there's so many things you can plug into amplifiers. I mean, you can plug your TVs in and all sorts, and um, separate DACs, all sorts. So it, there's too many permutations now, so they just number them. And that's your record out, which, like I say, you could actually use with a uh, with a headphone. Um, yeah, the Brio actually has a headphone socket, I think I've just said that, but the where the LXR doesn't. That's So if you wanted to run headphones on the LXR, you would have to use record out and buy a headphone amp. To be fair, that's a much better way of doing it anyway. Um, I mean, the, the actual headphone socket on the Braille is, is properly designed. It's not just taking a feed off the power amp and um, you know, dropping the voltage down. It is a proper little circuit. Uh, it, so, so it's, yeah, so it is good, but the it's always better to have an external headphone amp. Yeah, so we've got record player and put the, the actual earth is a little bit more accessible on that. Um, two, three, four, five input, um, which is your line input. So it's the same as the same as the Brio. So a record player input on four four lines, and you record for your headphone up, and then that's the, that's your preamp out. So basically, those two are the same as each other, except this gives you full line output. So it's basically on full volume all the time. So you're, you'd be connecting that to something that had a volume control on it, and preamp out is variable with the volume control of this amplifier. So the output of that varies, uh, so you'd be connecting this to something that doesn't have a doesn't have its own volume volume control. Um, and again, you got your uh, speaker speaker outlet switch. Uh, this sends the Brio. The, you can actually put bare cable through. You can um, spade connector or or four mil plug in the end. So it's quite adaptable that way. Really. I tend to prefer four mil plugs. Their wire is a bit dodgy, really, because over the t over years it will sort of splay out and potential to sh potential to short. So I wouldn't tend to do that. Yeah, and uh, both use standard IEC mains inputs. Um, that's it, really, for the back panel. Um, both come with remote, uh, which gives you volume and sort of um, input select. And both both of the remotes have. Should have got one out to show you actually, but the, it's just a basic remote. Um, both have uh, functions for CD as well, so uh, you can actually run their CD players, which are the Apollo and the Saturn, and pro probably the Isis as well, the big one that they do. Uh, probably, I think it's on the same, uh, same RC code, so it'll run off that. Um, that's that, I think, really. Let's put, let's put the camera back. Okay, so that's the, the Brio and the LXR. Um, I'll just do a short clip at the end of this showing you them plugged in and how the, the actual what, what the lights look like when it's plugged in really, just, just so you can see them. Um, but yeah, that's the two. I mean, really, they haven't really got any competition um, at their prices. I mean, there's nothing between the Brio and the LXR, which is, well, there's nothing, yeah, there's nothing, should I say, there's nothing cheap sort of around the price of the LXR or cheaper that is better than the Brio. In my mind, I've tried loads and loads of amplifiers, and the Brio is so good at the money. Um, I just can't find anything else. Um, there's things that sort of beat it in certain respects, but 
overall, the Brio kind of seems to have the best balance of everything. Um, and the LXR is kind of the same, but on a, on a bigger scale. Um, I think after, there's only real competition, there's only, there's only really competition for Riga amplifiers when you get up to the sort of 1500, 2000 pound mark. Um, the, the, the illicit, there's a few com competitors for it, and you might prefer, say, a sub 21 you might prefer an exposure. Um, there's various things out there which are sort of in the sort of same sort of area as, as I think with the Athos, with the, 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 the sort of three thousand pound amplifier they do. That's another one that's very much on its own. There's not an awful lot of competition for it. Perhaps the Southern Twenty One SE, um, possibly the name Nate, but I've I've, I've sold Athoses to people who have the name Nates. So you know the, the Super Nate, not the name Nate. Um, so I don't know really. It's sort of, but at this certainly at this level. There's no competition. I mean, it's partly because a lot of the competition have sort of superfluous features on the built-in DAC, they have Bluetooth. The Riggers don't have any of that because they're designed to be as good a sound for the money as you can at the price. Uh, and you, you do that by taking out all the... all the, Superfluous is probably a bit unfair because if you want Bluetooth you know, or if you want a DAC, it's not superfluous. But it's always better to do that as a separate thing anyway. There's, like iFi make a really good Bluetooth receiver which would, you could plug into this uh, if it was inbuilt it would be mediocre and it would be affecting the rest of the amplifier so and you'd be pay, paying for it even if you didn't need it uh, inbuilt DACs have a similar feeling about that really they tend not to be that great the inbuilt DACs you're paying for something that you may or may not be going to use and it interferes with the rest of the amplifier so why would you do it so it's better to be able to buy the bare bones amplifier and then just add in the bits that you want and reader sort of step by that a lot of other quite specialist manufacturers seem to be moving away from that and I think that's a shame I really do. Um, but anyway, ring amplifiers, there you go. I'll, I will do another, I'll sort of m m work my way up the range because I've got an illicit and I've got an Athos, so I'll do, I'll do um, comparisons between those as well. Um, yeah, if you want to listen to these two, give me a call at the shop, uh, can put, put them in the dumb rooms, you can take one out for the weekend if you, if you want. Um, just, just give us a call. Um, hope you like the video. Hopefully a bit shorter than usual, um, and I hopefully I haven't gone off on too many tangents. Um, but anyway, that's me, I suppose. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. If you can give us a like, um, if you can sort of follow us, um, that'd be great. Gets to, I think we've got uh, follow, subscribe. I mean, forgetting the terminology. Yeah, if you can su subscribe, that'd be great. We've, I think, I can't, I don't really know what subscribers is up to now, but it's, it su surprises me every time I look at it. It seems to be growing quite quickly. So yeah, if you can do that, that'd be brilliant. Um, any suggestions as all the videos to do, just, just stick, them, stick them in comments or email me at the, sh um, at the, at the shop, which is, I'll put that at the end, my lecture show audio, um, or give us a call and I'll put the phone number at the end if you've got any suggestions of videos to do, because I'm kind of, I'm not running out of ideas, but, um, Any suggestions would be good, because just in case I'm missing something, which I probably am, I tend to miss things. That's it, thank you very much, and um, see you in a future video. Of course, the phone's ringing.